Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn a snapshot into wall art in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. Well, this is the resulting image that I'm looking at here, and I'm going to show you how you can take this image and turn it into this. And we're going to have a play around with the black and white that we're creating as well. And what I'm looking for here is a way of taking a standard snapshot. I mean, this is really just a snapshot and making it into something that is really some art that we may print onto canvas, for example, and enjoy as a piece of art. And I have two other images that we're going to look at. I'm just going to close these down for the moment. And this is something like the original image. It's not the actual original because I changed my mind at the last minute as to which one I was going to use. But this is the resulting image that I've got from something similar to this. Literally a snapshot. It was really a, not a very attractive photo at all. But this is printable art. So let's see how we would achieve this effect. So I'm going to start with the photo of London. So let's just go and grab that. So with this image, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop and rotate it. And the piece of the image that I'm interested in is really just St Paul's Cathedral. So let's go and start to crop this in really, really tightly because I'm not concerned about the fact that this image may end up looking a bit grainy because that's really only going to help the character of the image. So I'm just going to position my crop rectangle so it really is almost a square and now I'm going to give it a pull because I want the image in the middle of this to be rotated. And when you're rotating an image, the one thing that you don't want to do is do a half-baked job of it. You really want to rotate it. So don't just rotate it like five or six degrees because then it just looks like a really bad mistake. But when you give it a really good pull and rotate it quite a lot, then it starts to look like, yes, this is a creative effect. So I'm just going to position some poles in the crop rectangle here in an attractive position and click the check mark to confirm that this is the crop that I want. So let's just zoom in so that we can see this image a little bit larger. Now there are two things I want to do here is one I want to convert it to black and white and secondly I want to give it this more artistic look. So I'm going to start with black and white and I'm going to apply an adjustment layer to it. So I'm going to choose layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. Now the benefit of using a black and white adjustment layer is that I can come back later on and change this adjustment if I wanted to. If I had just chosen image adjustments black and white, then I could get to the same place, but I wouldn't have an editable result. So I'm just going to settle for this right now because I don't really know what my curves layer is going to give me. So I don't really know what I want in my black and white. So I'm just going to click OK. And now let's go and add a curves adjustment layer on top of this because this curves adjustment layer is where we're going to get this really interesting effect. And I have to tell you that I came across this but totally by accident. But as soon as I saw the effect, I thought, oh, that's really nice. So let's go and see if it's repeatable because that's really important and what sort of results we can get by fine tuning it. So what I'm going to do is drag down on the bottom part of the curve and up on the top part of the curve because that is a fairly standard S curve. And now the accident that I had was that I started to pull up on the curve a bit. And what happened was that I started to fracture the image and then I gave it a bit of a pull down here. And as I did this, I got the impression that this image was sort of cut out and stuck on a background and I really like that effect. So I'm going to tell you what's happening here so that you can then see it and apply it in your own images. So this is the sort of thing that you should never do to a curve is turning it upside down effectively inverts the curve. So black becomes white and white becomes black. But for us it's working really well because this is controlling the sky. So I can make the sky go almost to black, certainly very, very dark, by just dragging down on this part of the curve because the lightest areas here are in actual fact now being pulled to black. And then the sort of mid-tones, the mid-grays, which actually are 
part of the sky but also most of some poles here are in this area so I can affect those by dragging on this and I can drag it into different places and pull on the curve a little bit differently to affect how some poles is actually going to be converted and then I can drag down here because this is the darkest areas of the image so I could actually pull these up if I wanted to and just adjust how they are looking. Anywhere I flatten the curve I'm going to get flat contrast so that's not really as attractive as it might be so we we'll probably want to pull the whole of the curve here not just part of it so that we actually lightened all the darker areas. You want to be really careful even though we've totally upended the curve here we've still got good contrast in the image and we haven't really flattened any areas but we would have flattened areas if we'd flattened the curve so you don't want the curve to be flat so you want to make sure that you've got some really good curves in it and it's not flat so this is giving us the look that I was after so I'm just going to close that down but also I can go back to the black and white now what the black and white is going to allow me to do is to adjust areas in the image to make them lighter or darker and so that's going to affect the resulting black and white. You can see that by adjusting the reds I'm adjusting this area down here so I can make it lighter. Ignoring the curves dialog actually just dealing with it in the black and white and this is partly some of the clouds are in this area so if I want them to be lighter then I can just drag this to the right if I want them to be darker more like the blues and I can drag it to the left I don't want to do much to the blues I'm really quite happy with how the sky is being rendered but I could look at the greens if there were any greens in this which there are not then I could affect those and let's look at the magentas well there's not a lot of magenta effect happening here most of the action that we're seeing is in the red channel here and in the yellow channel so having done that we can come back to our black and white and just fine tune that just work out what's going on here we could pull this curve point over a little bit and turn the skies to pure black we can take them up here and just make them like a really pale gray and then we can just move this curve around a little bit, move these points on the curve to adjust how some poles is being rendered. You can see here that I've actually managed to get a lot more contrast into some poles by dragging on this point on the curve. But let's take this down and let's send the sky to black. So somewhere in here will be your sweet spot and it really is just a creative decision as to what you do with the image. Now this is showing quite a bit of grain but in actual fact for this image grain is perfect. We're looking for an artistic effect so even if I hadn't had any grain appearing in the image I'd probably have gone and thrown some grain at it anyway. So let's go and have a look at the second image. Let's just tuck this one away for now and let's go and find the image of the Brighton Pavilion. Now I haven't actually worked on this one before. I've worked on a similar one but not this one in particular. So let's see how we go with this. First thing I'm going to do is crop it to a square. I'm going to crop in pretty close because I really just want these towers in the image. So once I've got my sort of square shape I'm going to drag on the side because I want to rotate this image and again we're going for a really big rotation not anything that is too small because it's just not worth rotating it if you're not going to give it a good rotation. Now this image where the other one did not is giving me some headroom so I've actually got some space above the towers which I like a little bit better so I'm just going to grab that and I'm missing a corner here so I'm just going to go and grab the corner convert this background layer into a regular layer by double clicking on it and now I'll choose edit fill I'm just going to use content aware fill and click OK and that's just going to fill in the missing corner so let's go back to the entire image I'll press Control or command D to deselect the selection and now let's just zoom in because we want to see things fairly close up and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other picture from the Thames in London and we're going to add a black and white adjustment layer and just select that and then we're going to add our curves adjustment 
And now let's go and do the same thing. So I'm going to make a mark on my line here by just dragging up. And I'm going to make a mark on my line here by just dragging down. And I'm going to take this one and drag it all the way up. And then having done that, I can now pull this one down. So again, we're fracturing the image again. This is not a curve that you would ever use for an image that you weren't trying to do something really artistic with. So this area here, this area of the curve is adjusting the sky. And if we want the sky to be black, we can just drag it down to make it black. And if I flatten it along the base of the curves adjustment, you can see that we could actually turn it to be really, really black if we wanted to. Up here, we're making adjustments on the towers themselves. So we can do things with them and just adjust how they're going to be rendered as lighter or darker. But we'll also have some control over them here in the black and white adjustment in a minute. And here I can just control how the very darkest areas of the image is being rendered. So I don't want them to be flattened too much. So I'm just going to bring them up so that they're a little bit lighter. And then maybe just adjust this a little bit. And maybe I don't want my sky to be black. Maybe I just want it to be a very dark grey. So I could do something like that with the sky here. Again, you can see that there's a lot of grain in the image, but really for an effect like this, grain would be the sort of thing that you would embrace because it really is giving you something interesting to look at. So again, I'm opening my black and white, and now we can go and individually adjust some of these colors. So you can see that the red is affecting this tower here. Well, if it was going to be too dark earlier, then I can lighten it, but interestingly, I'm able to lighten it by dragging traditionally where you would darken it. But because we've got this upside down curve, things are working a little bit in reverse. And here's the yellow. So I can open up the areas here in the tower and make them a lot lighter and whiter by just dragging the yellow slider to the left. Again, counterintuitive. This is not the way it usually works. Let's have a look at our skies. Well, we can impact the skies here by working on the cyans and the blues. And we can make it lighter or darker. So we can actually really quite affect the sky result here. And I'm liking the darker sort of sky. So I'm probably just going to bring it over to about there. And again, the blue slider is helping us with our skies as well. And then magenta. And there may or may not be much impact with the magenta. Well, magenta is actually working around the edges of the tower here. So whatever you want to do, I think I might lighten those. So here, unusually, if you like, the magenta slider is actually working the way it's supposed to. So take it to the right to lighten, to the left to darken. Having done that, let's go back to our curves and just see what additional impact we can have. Well, we're going to be able to bring a lot more detail out in this tower now that we've managed to make it lighter. So we're actually seeing some really crisp detail here, which is really nice. And then, of course, we can continue to work on our skies here. And this area is going to affect the towers as well. So we can decide whether we want to go lighter or darker. Because remembering here that we're not looking for anything that looks in any way realistic, just looking at getting a really interesting result from this image. So let's go and see where we started. This was the starting point for this image once we'd cropped and rotated it, and then adding the black and white adjustment, and then adding this really interesting effect to the image. And we're going to get the same result, of course, from this photo that we had of St. Paul's similar stuff. We're cropping it, we're rotating it, and then we're hitting it with our black and white and our curves adjustment. So this is the original image, and this is our more artistic image. So depending on how you shot the image, you may have more or less noise in the sky. This one's extremely noisy. This one here is showing a lot less noise. But it's an interesting effect, and I certainly hope that you like it. And I think it's going to work really well with architecture in particular, although you might get some interesting results with landscape. 
I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.